Audio Jungle. I will be talking about five things. First, I will be talking about ethnography. So basically, um, I will be going through the basic jargons related to ethnography and like what the whole thing is about. So this will be just a short summary. Second, I will talk about what I did for my project. Fourth, I will be talking about the location uh, where I went and what I did. Fourthly, I'll talk about my experience there. Lastly, I'll talk about the overview of the project. That is, how does my experience address the topic I chose? Ethnography means. Now let's talk about what ethnography is. Ethnography refers to. You can say that ethnography is a kind of a research method wherein a researcher who wants to study a culture or its people would try to blend in with the culture and would understand uh, how they live, how they behave, um, and uh, they would try to understand any lingual jargons related to their culture. And they would do so from their point of view. And, uh, and then after that, this researcher would try to write their observations from what they learn. Also, you may say that this may not be so what um, sub, uh, objective in that case, but a researcher has to maintain the integrity and also they have to write their own culture uh, from, the, uh, from their point of view. And now an uh, example of this includes, uh, you can see in the picture that uh, um, a white man is trying to study uh, a culture of some native Pacific Islanders. And these, uh, the man in the picture is uh, Malinowski, and the people he's study, uh, studying are from Trobriand Islands. Now let me talk a little bit about this project. I was given three choices. For first choice, I was supposed to interview a non-English speaking immigrant who came to Hong Kong for no more than two months. And I was supposed to, uh, and for the second one, I was supposed to study the economic interaction or the, I mean, like interaction of people in some kind of economic environment. So let's say like flea market or any kind of market. And for the third one, I was supposed to observe a ritual, more precisely a religious ritual of a non-Christian religion. I chose to do the second one, economics. So for economics part, I specifically wanted to focus on the econo uh, the interaction of Jewish people uh, with the sellers in a in a market. But um, because, as far as I know, the, there are really uh, few Jewish people living in Hong Kong, and it would be almost impossible for me to see how they would uh, how their economic interaction would differ so so what I did was I went to a synagogue and the place I visited was called Ohel Lia synagogue so this synagogue has a community center inside it and the synagogue and the community center they all together they are merged and inside the community center there was a shop so basically what I did was I tried to see how how the economic interaction took place between the Jewish buyer and the Jewish seller in this in environment. And I wanted to see what kind of language gets used and uh, how and how the whole overall interaction would differ from the stereotypes that are associated with them. And for this, I chose to compare my observed data versus the stereotype.
And that's what I wanted to focus on about the economics. Let me talk a little bit about the methodology of my ethnography. Uh, so basically, I took some pictures. However, I was not allowed to picture the products and some people at the place. So, and also videos were not allowed to be taken as well. So basically, I only took pictures of the landscape and the few interiors. And uh, as for the warning, I would like to say that um, it was not easy visiting the place given that um, there is uh, many Jewish communities in Hong Kong are basically they're off limits to non-Jewish people. And that is due to the rising anti-Semitism worldwide. And that is pretty understandable given that uh, why they asked me to book an appointment with them 10 days prior to... Um, uh, 10 days prior to coming there but in my case I I was it didn't took me 10 days but mostly I think two days and uh, I was told to bring my passport because they wanted to be sure that you know I am a legit person and uh, the research method involved uh, direct observation and inter and interviewing few people and uh, and what I liked about this place was that it, it was located at an uphill part of the central. And uh, it was near the Robinson Road and the area was quite good. So, yeah. First, I would like to talk about the bargaining. What I noticed there was that um, whenever people would bargain, they would usually put more emphasis on utensils. So usually, I mean, I mean, like they would ask the shopkeepers to have the prices reduced on almost every item, but they would do so more for the utensils. Whenever uh, the shopkeeper and the customers would engage in a casual conversation, they would avoid saying God's name, even in their own language. Just like what I mean is that they would avoid saying God in their own language. People, whenever they bought items, they would be usually encouraged by the shopkeeper to donate some amount of money for, uh, just to pay off for the synagogue's expenses. So I believe that was for uh, that was a religious tax they encouraged, and also um, people who who were either lawyers or who were or who were known to have a bit higher prestigious jobs, they were encouraged to pay higher taxes, especially if they were psychologists or lawyers. So the ladies I saw, they one of them was a lawyer, and she bought a utensil. Uh, most specifically a, a porcelain vessel and that cost about more than 800 Hong Kong dollars and the, she paid more than 300 Hong Kong dollars. The other thing that I noticed was about language especially uh, the, the Jewish people that I saw there they were mostly light-skinned people and I assume uh, not every light-skinned person would be a white person but um uh, but usually what I notice is that most of them spoke in Russian and uh, those who spoke in Russian were also able to speak in Hebrew but for casual exchanges even when talking to priest or talking to someone at shop they would usually talk in Russian and those who spoke Hebrew or English they would I mean their level of interaction would be a bit a uh, bit more uh you you won't i wouldn't say it's friendly neither too hostile but it it just wasn't that friendly in the sense that you know the shopkeeper would be that welcoming of this person uh, who spoke hebrew more than they spoke russian lastly uh on the issue of buyer and seller relationship it all boiled down to if those if the buyer and seller were from the same ethnicity or not Usually, anyone uh, who was a Russian, those two ladies that I saw were Russians, and uh, usually uh, people from the same ethnic background would be 
more open to each other than those who were not. So it does not matter if those people, both of them were white Jewish people, as long as they were from same ethnicity, they would be far more open to each other than the Jewish people who were not from the same ethnicity, even though they were white or not. Both ladies were of Russian Israeli diaspora, and they mostly lived uh, in Israel, but later on they moved to Hong Kong. One of them was a lawyer, another was a housewife, and usually um, they preferred buying food items more than they bought, uh, let's just say maybe utensils or maybe even clothes. Uh, they mostly bought food items from the synagogue or any other Jewish restaurants or any kosher certified uh places in Hong Kong, but usually they bought most of their food items from the synagogue, the one I visited, that was the one, and the commodities um, that they had were mostly utensils, and there was a lack of uh, edible items, so they usually had to uh, import uh, kosher certified snacks, or maybe meat, or even vegetables, and uh, and they seemed rather expensive, and uh, but the they did not mind uh, buying these things. In terms of social roles, uh, what I saw at the shop, uh, I was uh, I noticed that the shopkeeper was a female, and most of her customers were also females, and usually it is females that would go for shopping. Now, on the preferred hierarchy of items, um, what I noticed is that the food were mo the food items were the only thing that were bought from these uh, cultural centers and the synagogues and also from the restaurants, even though they were in scarcity. And uh, the problem could be due to the lack of kosher certified the la uh, the kosher certified food items in Hong Kong, and also. Um, uh, Anthropologically speaking, um, it does not seem that uh, the relationship between the buyer and the seller was uh, based on some kind of, um, it was not a gift relationship and neither you can, uh, neither it seemed like uh, there was a resistance against something. Also, um, they seemed uh, rather unhappy about the lack of availability of kosher items throughout Hong Kong. Uh, they only seem to care about buying things from the place they're familiar with. Lastly, on the language and the relationship. Usually, uh, female customers would often inquire about uh, the health of the family, uh, family members, especially about the husband and the children. And uh, this would all depend on uh, how familiar they are. So if both of the ladies were Russian, they would mostly talk about um, their sexual life and uh, the health of their family members. And uh, this kind of indicates that it is um, a, f a fictive kinship. So we could say that in, uh, uh, we can say that Fictive, kin uh, fictive kinship would something be like, you know, you are my brother, but you may not be from the same mother as I am, but you're still a brother to me. So that means that uh, the relationships are forged based on social interaction and the level of familiarity, not by the blood lineage. Here you can see an image of uh, an interior a part of their shop. I was not allowed to take pictures of people and shoot videos and also to take pictures of items individually but I was at least allowed to have this picture. From this I learned three things. First, I learned that uh, stereotypes are not often valid, especially the negative ones. Uh, Jewish people are often stereotyped, uh, type, uh, they're often stereotyped as being quite conservative with their spending and what they buy and what they eat. 
but especially from what I observed that this doesn't seem to be the case and even uh, if even if the one compares uh, where the Jewish community is located they're mostly located in central and mid levels of Hong Kong and these are quite expensive places and uh, also I am not saying that every Jewish person is rich or that they are really conservative with their spending often this is not the case especially if they are such a, a big spenders on buying food uh, which is kosher and uh, may not be uh, easily obtainable anywhere in Hong Kong second one uh, uh, I learned about market also the place I visited it, it was just a small shop and that was inside a religious center so if we go by the definition of what makes a market a market then the, the place I visited or the play uh, and the and at that place where I observed the interaction between the buyer and seller may not be as valid as observing the interaction between a buyer and a seller in a flea market such as in Mongkok or somewhere else or in supermarket so uh, I assume this may not be as valid as that third thing uh, I would like to say that um, ethnographic data they're often based on the personal reporting of the ethnographers so what it means is that uh, we cannot validate the data neither it is falsifiable so for any scientific subject even though anthropology is considered as a weak science so for any scientific subject the data must be falsifiable and verifiable also that um, uh, I may I may be using this as a criticism but um, that being said my own findings my own uh, uh, conclusion should also be taken with a pinch of salt and should also be scrutinized by every scientific means uh, thank you for listening have a good day